Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a keyboard from a company that's been around for a minute, but we've just never had a chance to touch base until recently. And they asked me if I wanted to take a look at one of their new 1800s, which it might just be my perception, but 1800s seem to be coming quite popular. Um, It'd be hard for me to say which layout is the most popular. I like TKL the most, um, but a lot of people like 65%. But like myself, I if I use anything smaller than an 1800, I need a numpad. So I'm guessing that's why it's becoming very popular. People are like, I want to downsize to a smaller keyboard, but I cannot give up the numpad. So that's just my reasoning. I don't have any data behind that to corroborate that, so just me talking. Anyway, today we're taking a look at a keyboard from a company called Melgeek, which I'm sure some of you guys have heard about before, and we're taking a look at the Modern 97. Now, with this uh, shrink wrap that it has on it, it doesn't play nicely with my studio light, so let me go ahead and take that off real quick. Anyway, let's take a look. I, I actually, I gotta say, I like the packaging. It's a cardboard, but it's got a nicer texture it almost feels almost feels like it's plastic it might have this might be some sort of hybrid but and it's got little X's um, engraved and modern 97 and I've seen these icons before I guess it's part of their uh, the branding but let's see what we have here so we're taking a look at the modern 97 um, it, it is a three mode with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery uh, looks like the case is made out of both polycarbonate and ABS and the keycaps are ABS. It is compatible with Mac, Windows, iOS, Linux. Yes, Linux. Um, and it switches has the Pixel T. I think those are the tactile, but I'm not sure. So we have backlight RGB. We have 2.4, 5.1, Bluetooth and 2.4. And of course, type C. All right, so it looks like it's a um, it's a nice keyboard. I have I've only seen pictures of it. I have not even looked up any sound tests. So, like I say in a lot of my videos, um, I like to go in blind. I like to I like to discover you know things about the product, the keyboard, while you know I'll write along with you guys. So that's kind of part of my process. And plus, I think it's just more genuine if I'm actually you know realizing this and not having written a script and then pretend to be like oh wow it has this you wrote a whole script for it you can't i don't know it just i'm not an actor and i'm not a salesperson i'm a consumer that enjoys mechanical keyboards and i like to just be honest about them so that's what i like to do anyway we took off that band so we're going to take off this top cover this is a really cool keyboard uh, this is really cool material that they've uh case i mean it is cardboard but it's a finer cardboard uh I'm, I'm not very familiar with the papers industry but it's really nicely molded all right so before we really take a look at this keyboard i'm just going to set it aside i want to see what we have in here all right so we have a nice user card which i am very fond of them oh yeah i like the um see there's an incline oh my cat how did my cat hair already get in here? I just opened this. All right, so in the box, we have the um, the quick guide, user guide in two languages. We have a, it's basically like a, a hazards guide or not really a user guide, I'd say, like a warnings of it. We've got the uh, really cool USB 2.4 Bluetooth connector that has a, a uh, Lego connector at the top, so I could actually like, Take my little Lego guy and hey, I'm 2.4 gigahertz. Yay, yay. Oh, it's not playtime. Oh, sorry. Anyway, um, that's actually interesting. And the fact that the uh, connector is plastic, I think that's the first time. I mean, I've seen them bare where it doesn't have the cover, where it just has the, uh, the inserts with the contact. But I can't recall just seeing one with a plastic shield over it like that. It's interesting, though. We have a separate switch puller with Mel Geek's name on it and we have 
a keycap puller, wire of course. We also have a USB-C to USB-A cable. And then we have this little box. Let's see what's in the little box here. Oh, it looks like we have some spare keycaps to change out. Ah, very nice. So we have some spare keycaps uh, for uh, you want to switch colors or you're going to be on Mac. Well, we have the keycaps here. I have the keycaps out. Let's see. It's an interesting font for the legend. I'm not the craziest about curved or rounded fonts per se on keyboards. It kind of gives me a Comic Sans kind of feel, but that's just me being nitpicky. Let's see, I would guess right about 1.3, 1.4. What do we got? 1.3. So that's a decent thickness, double shot, and I think, it, yeah, they said ABS though. They don't feel like ABS. If I was guessing, I'd, I would guess PBT because it has that softer, kind of silkier, smooth feel that PBT usually has. And here we are with the Melgeek Modern 97. This one is the Ocean colorway, and they have another one that's called the Fountain colorway. And as you can see, we have a speckled pattern on here, but it doesn't, there's no texture, so it's just a part of the paint. And then we have a translucent bottom with, this feels kind of like a weight. It's not super heavy. And it looks like we've got some really good deep um, dampening down in there. And these are textured, raised, uh, the logos, the... Uh, gamers love gaming, somebody loves gaming, but uh, the heart's got a band-aid on it. I don't know, I'm trying to decipher the hieroglyphs, but... I'm probably way off. Um, and we have the mode switches here for Bluetooth and for 2.4. And there is the port for, oh, it's actually covered. Ah, we don't have any kick out feet, which I mean is usually the case when we're dealing with ABS or PC. I'm guessing the top's ABS and the bottom is PC. And that's why they said it's a mixed material. Uh -huh. That has, it's a little bit more muted than I'm used to, but it has a nice, um, I mean, obviously the switch, but it's, this is almost, it's not a silent keyboard, but this would be something I think that somebody could use in an office space, in a cubicle office space and not um, upset their, their coworkers because I, don't know, I find it pleasing. It is a little scratchy, but I'm sure that will go away after a couple, um, a few days of use, a couple of weeks. Let's see what we've got under here. Oh, now this is interesting. It said it was the pixel switch. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say it's uh, a kale switch because of, yep, it is a kale switch. And it's... Is an interesting tactile kale pixel. I'll have to look it up and find out more about it. But it's uh, it's one of those newer switches. I'm actually a big fan of these. See, it has this uh, plastic piece that acts as a diffuser. This sits right on top of the LED and it diffuses it out. It's really nice for um, you know, especially when you have um, yep, that's a PC plate. It feels like when you have a PC plate, it helps diffuse the light. Um, and we have a uh, non-shine through keycaps. It helps to give a glow around the lights, which is what I prefer over most shine through. There's a few shine through I like, I know. But this is an interesting switch. It's been a while since I've come across a kale tactile that I like. But then again, I don't usually buy many kales. I like the kale cream, the original, not the box. I'm not the biggest fan of a box. Um, switches especially because if you open them up and you lose that little button that's it but this is an interesting tactile so in the case oh, yeah, it definitely appears to be a polycarbonate plate if I had to guess I don't think it'd be FR4 and then we have a nice uh, silicone 
padding dampening between the plate and the PCB and then we have a layer of I I've been corrected I've been saying IPXC it's IXPE that's you know PE PE foam IXPE I apologize I somebody corrected me and I looked it up and I was like I've been saying it wrong I don't know why I was saying IPXE but they even said that I was probably confusing it with PXE boot uh, which is a way for servers or computers to boot up off the network instead of having any media on them and i've been using pxe for many years so <clears throat> that's probably in my brain i confused those two acronyms and was saying ipxe all this time and it's ixpe as in pe foam that's why it's it's basically a commercial replacement for the pe foam mod so they have the sheet of ixpe foam above the PCB and there does not seem to be a pet layer um, I've been finding on some keyboards they're starting to use what's called PET plastic um, I don't know exactly what mill I don't have a way to really measure mills I have a caliper but it ain't gonna go down to that um, but that adds a definite pop to uh, keyboards and then we have down below what feels like a very dense silicone rubber if I had to guess um, as the uh, dampener and I mean that's probably it although it's blue on this side that's right on this side it might be a couple of layers like one layer than the battery than another layer but I will be coming back to this and at that point I will open it up and we'll take a look at what's actually in there and see if we apply any mods now let's check out these stabilizers Ooh, that's um, that's a lot looser than I would like my stabilizers to be. Let's take them out. All right, we are lubed, but we're not overly lubed. Huh. It's funny. For a second, I thought that it had a band-aid. I mean the plumber's tape on it but yeah it's uh it's it's not globbed on there and oh man come on for real how old are these stabilizers they need to be clipped they have the feet these actually need to be clipped I'm that I'm, that surprises me to be quite honest with you I thought uh, those didn't even exist anymore so I'm poking here to see and it does not feel like there is any uh, holes on the PCB so that it can be replaced with um, screw and stabilizers so I mean it does have padding the, P the IXPE sheet but I would I would have gotten rid of the these older ones with the feet but yeah even locking it on there I mean it rocks back and forth a good amount I would rather not see that but I have seen some that are loose but then when you press it there's no rattle whatsoever Yeah, it has the slightest of tick. Slight. It's very, very minimal. And, I mean, that'll just be fixed with Band-Aid. Um, with either tape or a Band-Aid mod. That is a simple fix. So, I gotta say, I do like the lines on the design. It has a almost like a rounded wedge for the bottom. Um, <clears throat> they do state to have an updated gasket design. Since I'm not familiar with any of the other ones... I gotta say it's it's decent you can definitely see it it's not too much um, I I like a little flex but not a bottom out and this one doesn't have it it feels nice and solid while still being soft at the same time this tactile is <laughs> it's it's growing on me it's quite heavy And their dampening is definitely 
doing its job. Now let's see what it looks like with the lights on. Let's see. Let's go ahead and connect it. If I could remember which one was. <laughs> All right, green is usually for the 2.4, so I'm going to say Bluetooth is on. Yep, blue. All right. So let's see if we can connect Bluetooth real quick. All right, it took a little bit longer, but that's just the initial pair. But it's connected and it's working just fine. All right, so it looks like. All right, there we go. There's the effects. Let's see how bright these RGB LEDs are. Oh, okay, they seem to be decent brightness enough. Let me see. This is, oh. oh, yeah. They're actually pretty bright. Wow. I was not expecting them to be that bright. That is, um, it's a bright keyboard. That's bright enough. I think I might actually be able to read the legends in a dark room. That is one pretty lit keyboard. And see its color. So we go through the effects, and then we can go through the colors. I like the blue on here. Should have my Windows workstation up and running this week, so I'll be able to actually take a look at the software again. One thing that I mean, I like how this is built and everything, but we're dealing with plastic. Why isn't there a pocket for the RGB or the 2.4 gigahertz dongle? And I mean, why does it have a Lego connector? I mean, I would think even if you just had a place to stick it in with the Lego connector, I mean, I don't know. There's so many ways I could see attaching that without messing with the design, even making, you know, just a little bit more of a lip here. You know, so they could slip in with a magnet. I just, I see several ways where they could have included a way to store the 2.4. Some people prefer 2.4 uh, than, you know, some people prefer 2.4 over uh, Bluetooth. So having that dongle not have a pocket, um, it's just, it's one of those things that's just like, eh. I mean, it's almost forgivable on an aluminum kit, though I've seen um, some aluminum kits that do quite well at incorporating that. But when you have a plastic kit, it's just there's not much excuse for, you know, leaving out that one, you know, it's just, to me, it's if you have a 2.4, you have to have a place to store it. You have to have a place that it's going to stick with the keyboard. I I can go through. I have random spots in my house now that I've collected 2.4 connectors. And half of them, I don't know what they go to. Now, I actually thought of writing an app that reads the USB device ID and then tries to search a database to figure out what keyboard it goes to. But um, I don't know. I don't know if that's worth the effort. What do you guys think? I mean, would you use it? You know, you plug it in. Okay, this goes to a RK61. So, oh, okay. I know it's what this one goes to. It just, it'd be hard to get that database together, I think. Plus, it's not like manufacturers announce the revisions all that often with the PCID. So, um, I think it would be, it would work for only a subset of keyboards. That's why I don't. I think that I haven't really given it too much time and effort. Anyway, um, I do love how this looks. And I do enjoy how it sounds. These are very crunchy tactiles. Um, this is the kind of tactile that I like. I'm not sure that this is something that everyone is going to like. So, but... Nice, heavy, pronounced bump, and it's just the specs. Today we're taking a look at the Melgeek Modern 97, a three-mode, 98% pre-built from Melgeek. It has Bluetooth 5.1, USB 2.4, and USB-C connectivity. It comes with a gasket-mounted, south-facing, 3 and a 5-pin hot swap PCB that also includes flex or slotted cuts. 
It has a PC plate, a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and your choice of kale switches from Sonic 53, the kale box plastic, and the kale tactile, which is installed on this keyboard. The keycaps are double shot ABS of the MCR profile, which is quite similar to Cherry, just more sculpted. Pulling on this keyboard is 1000 Hertz over wired and 2.4 and 125 hertz over Bluetooth 5.1. The weight of this keyboard is 1,029 grams. The chin sits at 22 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 42 millimeters above the typing surface, providing for a default typing angle of 11 degrees. This keyboard manufacturer retails for $139.99. So this is an interesting 98%. I got to say, I like the layout. I love the switches on it. Um, the, the name of it is Kale Tactile. I, I never had heard of the switch. I think they may be made just specifically for Mel Geek. I'm not sure, though. Um, they do say custom gaming switches. Now, this does seem to be aimed at work and play. So provides everything that you need if you're going to be working, but also provides that 1000 hertz pulling rate uh, over 2.4 and USB wired. A lot of keyboards are only going to get that pulling rate if you're actually connected wired. So for some people, having that 2.4 is going, uh, having that higher pulling rate on 2.4 is going to be very enticing to them. Um, for me, that's even more reason why they should include a pocket uh, for that 2.4. Um, other than that, I really I can't say that I have any complaints about it. It is a solid keyboard. It it's not too heavy, but it feels substantial. Um, <clears throat> it does have a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, so if um, it's sipping juice, like I know Bluetooth 5.1 is um, low energy, though I didn't say BLE, so I'm not sure if it's using that protocol or not. Um, but the lights are pretty bright, so I'm actually interested to see. Um, here's another keyboard I'm gonna add to my daily drivers list to um, see over wireless how long the battery will last after I fully charge it. But I, I gotta say, I do like the blocker, so I'm gonna be able to find the arrow keys should I need. Um, obviously, you know, I, since finding a, an 1800 that has the full right shift, I've kind of got used to that. And I kind of wish it was done more often, but that's not, I mean, I think that this is going to be fine. Uh, the problem I find is when they actually put a key here and there's really no way but to look down to try to find out where the arrows are or you might be off. But otherwise, I like how it's uh, laid out. Um, I do hope to have my Windows uh, workstation back up and running this week, so I'll be able to check out the software, which is called Hive Firmware. Um, but from what I've read, people seem to really like it. It has per-key RGB programmability as well as rebinding, um, so you can customize this, although obviously we have all the keys, but if you don't have them in the spots that you like them, like for me, I mean, I'm going to have to turn off the numpad to hit delete. So. I will probably, because I never use pause, I may change that out. Remove print over here and make that delete. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, it, for a stock keyboard, it it sounds amazing. These pre builts are just, they're blowing my mind how well they're sounding out of the gate. Because just even just a year ago, and I, I feel like I'm uh, like a broken record because I've been saying this a lot in the last few weeks. But even a year ago, a keyboard this price or priced higher would have sounded, I mean, just just a little bit above, you know, one that was a quarter of the price on Amazon. Uh, pre builts were just almost, it was almost just a given that if you were buying a pre built and you wanted, you know, it to sound and feel good, that it was, you know, going to take off the switches, take off the keycaps, and mod that thing before it even sounds decent for. A keyboard to be pulled out of the box and sound this good we're definitely 
living in the golden age of mechanical keyboards. I, I kid. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess they, they can only get better. I hope. <laughs> but, I mean, this being directed at uh, both work and office or, you know, work and play, I think that's, you know, it's, it, you're, they're, they're ca crossing over two different boundaries and kind of bringing it together because, I mean, a lot of people at work come home and unwind with gaming. So <laughs> it makes sense. And if you can take your work keyboard and it looks good enough for the office, but it's also loaded enough for gaming, you know, as I said with the 2.4, the only thing I just, I hope, I hope they, they are considering in newer models to add the 2.4 pocket. But other than that, I mean, I really, I, I love that it has a PC plate. I do wish that the stabilizers were a little bit newer, but but though being, being a little loose does not seem to affect their efficacy. So uh, I don't really hear I hear the slightest of ticking on the backspace, but not something that would drive me mad. And it's literally just going to take a piece of tape on either side of those clips to fix it up. Now, I will be coming back to this for sure because I want to, because of the way that it sounds right now, I think I can get like a really deep, deep tone out of this um, with a couple of different mods. But I'm probably going to be coming back to a lot of keyboards with a pet mod too because I am enjoying what that does to keyboards. Um, it brings brings a lot of keyboards to life. So far, I have not been dissatisfied with any any keyboard I've applied that mod to. But I, I am working on a video that will be the pet PET mod, how I do it, different materials that you can use, you know, that come close or is PET, um, and doing it across several keyboards, providing before and after uh, sound test. Anyway, I I gotta say, for my first Mel Geek, I like. Um, I think it might be priced a little bit higher than what the current market is offering, but not by much. Um, because it is a solid keyboard, it does have, like I said, that I don't really game, but I know from having family members and friends that are hardcore gamers how important that polling rate is because, I mean, it could mean the difference between life and death in the game. Um, so I, that I can appreciate because I know not a lot of keyboards focus on that unless they're specifically game or related and a lot of times they'll cost more money for that. So I think that there's a balance that's being struck here. Um, though I have seen this for a little bit cheaper, so they do go on sale. Um, and I think it can probably be bought for about 10% less. Um, though like I said, it does retail for 139 I do believe I've seen it for 115 if it was the same keyboard. I, I see so many keyboards, they all kind of just become one in my head, one giant keyboard with all the keys. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the, the Mel Geek Modern 97. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys' thoughts are on the sound because, I mean, with these tactiles, it, it's just, it's a, it's a chunky, crunchy type of feel, stock. Like I, I can think of a couple of keyboards I've worked on and modded to get something close to this. So pulling out one out of the box that sounds like this is kind of, um, I don't know, it's it's pretty cool. I would I would say. Anyway, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this keyboard. What do you think of it? Also, if there's any specific mod or something you'd like for me to look for when I do open it up let me know in the comments below let's get a conversation going and until the next transmission keep calm and keep on